Welcome to MHM Podcast Network on MovieHouseMemories.com. Podcast for pod people. Our feature presentation begins now. You are listening to Lunchtime Movie Review from LunchtimeMovieReview.com, and we are the children of the 80s. Jason. And I'm Patrick. In this episode, well, we're going to talk about September. Just September in the 80s. End of baseball season, beginning of football season. Yeah. You choose second album until they <laughs> and decided October would be a better <laughs> That's choice. Right. They were late on the release. Yeah. And some of the films that came out in September 1980 through 1984. Well, we're going to do five years? September is one of the sh- month of the year for movies every year that's what i found why is that because everybody's back in school it's before the holidays october you start seeing the horror films november you start seeing the big christmas movies come out september is just this dead area all the summer films are done and really done by august see i just thought january was supposed to be the dump month but it seems like september is a second dump month september is probably the biggest dump month january you still have a lot of, nowadays, you now have a lot of Oscar films being released, you know, kind of nationally in January and February, trying to get build up towards that push for Oscar. Right. Hollywood takes bigger dumps in September than right. January. Okay. If you see your movie move to September, you know your movie sucks. Well, and with that, that segue, <laughs> you know, Matt has a list So you guys should us. be very excited about these films we're going to talk about. All right, 1980. September of 1980. Here's here's a list of films that come out. Ordinary People. Sucks. In God We Trust, with a dollar sign. Phobia. Stardust Memories. Resurrection and Divine Madness. I can name one of those films. Haven't seen any of them. I think I can name four of them. Or seen four of them. Ordinary People. Ordinary People. Best Picture winner, 1980. All right. So no, 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 no. 1980? Best Director. Best Director. Robert sorry. Redford. Raging Bull won Best Picture. Martin Scorsese no, got or, f- no. Ordinary People win. Did it win? Over, over Raging Bull? Raging yeah. Bull, Elephant Man, Coal Miner's Daughter, and Tess. Oh, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. Yeah, it wins. So I'm we got a... Surprise he even made Goodfellas. So dump month, huh? He should have made it and never released it. The uh, f*** you to the Academy. The H- Hollywood hates Martin Scorsese, or uh, well, at least they used to. How? More than they hate black <laughs> have people. You, have you... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> so, uh, have you seen Ordinary People? I've never seen it. It's I have film. seen it. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's Who's in terrible. It? Timothy Hutton, a Mary Tyler Judd yeah. Hirsch. Or he wants Judd. to kill himself. Yeah. They're both Mary nominated. Tyler Moore. Hey, Timothy Hutton won Best Supporting Actor for it. Uh, yeah. Judd Hirsch was nominated. Give me a break. Nominated for Best Actor? No, Best Supporting. They're, they're two nominated for Supporting. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Timothy Hutton was good in Falcon and the Snowman. To give you an idea, the number one film that year is Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, we just referred to it as The Empire Strikes Back. Number two, <laughs> as I like to think of it. And was that nominated? Uh, it was nominated for something. Not picture. Not picture, no. Hollywood's retarded. Yeah, Best Art Direction. And didn't win that, did it? Nope. Oh, it did win for Best Sound. That would have been a better choice. Raging Bull would have been a better choice. Elephant Man would have been a better choice. But we have the Best Picture winner... Coming out in September in dump month. Yeah, in dump month of 1980. All right. Best picture winner. Let's see if there's a difference in 1980. And best director and best supporting actor. Yeah. So pretty, and, that's, and that's why pretty, Ordinary People probably pretty wins. Pretty big. Uh, because Robert Redford directed it, and he's Hollywood favorite at the time. Well, and, and two, don't you walk into some of these films saying it's September. I'm going to go to the movies. I know all I'm going to see is crap. And when it's a little bit better than crap. Like, that was mind, amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> Right. right. All right, 1981, September. Tim? With Mel Gibson? I don't know. Is that a is that about a retard? Yeah. Uh, it's seriously, it's about, it's it's seriously it's about a retard. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mel Gibson. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's not the political. Isn't correct. it I am Tim? No. He doesn't go Tim? full retard, though. No. 
That's not the right term. It's it's about a retard. Mommy Dearest, <laughs> which I thought came out in the 70s. French Lieutenant's Woman. Meryl which, Street. Which was a uh, Oscar nominee, not a f- picture, but was nominated for a number of right, Oscars. You had me at Meryl Street. Street. <laughs> right. Continental Divide. John Holy Belushi's sh- last film. Yeah. That's 19 years. He dies in 81, right? Yeah, he... 82. I really think that with the money he made on Continental Divide, he spent on heroin. Well, he must have gotten it all because it only grossed $15 million. Yeah, He died shortly after. Well, it was not a comedy. Mm. Kind of like all of Chevy Chase's films. <laughs> when you go, hey, I want to go see a drama about a short, fat guy who used to right. be funny. If he had done a dialect like Meryl Streep, he would have gotten an Oscar nomination. Absolutely. Raggedy Man, Only When I Laugh, Southern Comfort, Carbon Copy, So Fine. Are these the movies, or are you just putting random names together in a sentence? <laughs> it feels yeah. like that. Right, Carbon I'm Copy. Just saying the least racist title <laughs> that Hollywood can come up with. I wonder what that's about. <laughs> Patrick. Denzel Washington, George Siegel. <laughs> Denzel Washington plays George Siegel's... Wait, Denzel Washington, the black Denzel Washington? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't edit yourself, Patrick. Tell us. Right. No. Tell us the New York Minute version of the New plot. York Minute. George Siegel has an illegitimate son who turns out to be black, and he thinks he can play basketball. That's about the highlights of the film. <laughs> I'm surprised they're not right. remaking that right now. Hollywood, get on that, would I you? I love how Here's the his comedy son part turns of... out to be black. Right. Like you didn't know you were doing a black chick? Yeah. Was she in whiteface? No, he knew she, he no. was doing a... It, it was during the 60s. They described it. It was Den- during the 60s. Denzel Washington does not look like what they would refer to in the 81 as a mulatto. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that not is, my term. That's no, that what is they, true. Let alone a Jewish mulatto. Right. So, <laughs> George, George Siegel, right? It was the mongoid versus the mulatto <laughs> in 1981 September. And what makes him think he could play basketball? That's half Jew. <laughs> He's, it cancels out. Yeah. Well, because he's black, and that's the comedy of it, because he can't. Right. Is, is it a comedy? <laughs> it's a comedy. It's huh. called Carbon Copy. Of course it's a comedy. We're yeah, supposed to horrible. make fun of black people Carbon. interacting with white folk. Carbon Copy. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, right. it was on a- you never saw this? No, I don't think I have. Never it heard was of on it. HBO all the time. Really? I remember it all the time. Maybe wow. if I saw it, maybe I don't remember the name. All right, got two more in 81. So but it'd be fine. funny if they named it, like, Whitewash and his kid was white. <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. No, that's going to be, right. the, the Damon brothers are going to redo that this year. It's going to be great. Right. So fine and true confession. And Chariots of Fire. Yeah, all right. I think I've seen every film on that list. Wow. Oh, wow. I've seen one. I've seen Mommy Dearest of all all those. That You know, I find that the most surprising thing is you saw Mommy Dearest. <laughs> And Chariots of Fire. No, that was on HBO yeah. all the time. I don't remember. I saw that as an adult. It was like know. Looker, Mommy Dearest, kind of back to back. And something with Christopher Reeve, not Superman. Somewhere Death Trap. Death oh, Trap. Death Trap was always on. <laughs> and I was just waiting, you know, to get through the day to Mr. Mom. So I had to w- w- watch through that. <laughs> For the second year in a row, yeah. the best Oscar or best picture Oscar right. winner comes out in Dump Month. About wow. running. Well, <laughs> about Jewish running. But he wasn't Jewish. He was a Seventh Day Adventist. Oh. He didn't run on Sundays. Is that what it was about? That's why God made him fast. I thought it was like the Holocaust. There was a Jew too. Yeah. Yeah. It was both. Oh, the main dude is like the yes. Yeah. So the Church Fire wins in Dump Month. Oh. 1982. All right. I'm just going through these because there's one of them that I'm pretty sure is the only one that's a movie. <laughs> the Incubus, the Concrete Jungle. The, okay, I want to say these are my favorite film names. I've never seen them, but Inchon, Hammett, Eating Raul. No, it's Inchon, Hammett, Eating Raul. <laughs> yes, Giorgio. The, 1982 was, September 1982 was definitely. Yeah, okay, and then dump. A- Amityville 2, The Possession. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, there's nothing. <laughs> Which was so bad, they couldn't wait till October. The <laughs> highest the highest grossing movie that month was The Incubus at $13 million. Wow. All yay, right. Yay, Satan. Yeah, Patrick, did you know any of those? Uh, the Dark Lord. Or what I think I've seen Incubus. I'm pretty sure I've seen Eating Raul, and I don't think I've seen Amityville, too, but I know what it is. Yeah. Were you kidnapped and tortured as a child? Yeah, I is worked this what it was? I worked at a video store for a f***ing decade, you know? In a decade, you couldn't have gotten to The Incubus. I just picture like a creepy fat guy kidnapping you. It was like, you can watch this movie or give me a blowjob. And you're like, I'll take the movie. And then the next one, you're like, oh, I'm just doing the blowjob. No, no. Show enough didn't come around for years later. So, 
All right, 1983, there's a bunch of movies. There's a lot more that, that come out, uh, but what I'm going to jump to is The Big Chill comes uh-huh. out. All right, so that had a lot of Oscar mojo. Mm-hmm. Maybe didn't win, but well, I think it was nominated. It right? did have some stiff competition as far as an Oscar in the in September because Revenge of the Ninja also comes oh, out. Oh, man. Man. good, man. We that did... is a great movie. Robots and Ninjas. Revenge it doesn't get any ninja. better, man. Educating Reno. Only a ninja can stop a ninja. <laughs> right. Only a ninja. With a robotic ninja. Can well, yeah, and, and, and I, I, that, was, that was on a loop on HBO. I remember that very well. Some of us based our lives on that elementary lots, school. Lots of lots of uh, hot tub scenes, including the one with the the blow darts. Wait a the minute, the couple wait that's minute. in the embrace. Yeah. So it's you got a, ninjas. You got ninjas and naked. And ninjas? oh, they always went together. Right. Oh, I like it. Yeah. American yeah, a ninja. Couple, couple in the hot tub. They take it from a ninja with the blow darts. American so they ninja. Die. Michael Dudikoff. This that's different. They yeah. die. In, that was they, my first ninja movie. Die right there in the hot tub in an embrace. And then the next scene. Right. The police are there, detectives at the crime scene, they're saying, and one guy turns the other and says, coroner says it's going to take a jackhammer to get him apart. <laughs> All right, num- uh, 1984. Only a ninja can stop a ninja. The Brother from Another Planet. Sir, we only, nice. you only did two movies from 1983, or are we still in 1983? No, nah, we're jumping. I, dude, if you're going to do it, at least give us the list of 1983. Okay, here's, all right, so here's more 1983. You're like, yeah, September's a big pile of shit. Uh, we got big chill. <laughs> Turkey Shoot, Nightmares, Striker, Death Stalker, Lonely Hearts, Mortuary, Leidenschlafig, Blumchen. Oh, boy. <laughs> Heat and Dust, Strange Invaders, Who Dares Wins, Cross Creek, Educating Rita Pieces, Last Plane Out, Eddie and the Cruisers, which was also on HBO Loop. Uh, the Honorary Consul, Hannah Kay, The Lonely Lady, and Brainstorm. See, I could have skipped all those. No, Brainstorm. But Nightmares. The Dresser. Oh, Nightmares. The West of Us. Was that the year The Dresser came out, too? Yeah. All right, see? Still dump month, man. Of course, a movie named Educating Rita that's not a porno is going to have some Oscar mojo. Yeah, Michael Caine. Right. Yeah. 1984, or, yeah, 1984, September. Brother from Another Planet. The Warrior and the Sorceress, A Soldier Story, Exterminator 2. I love Exterminator 2. Ninja 3, The Domination. Love that movie. The first 10 minutes, best ninja movie ever. Uh, skip the rest. Un Amor de Swan. Amadeus, Rock You ah, Amadeus. Okay. The Evil That Men Do, Places in the Heart, Until September, Windy City, All of Me with uh, Steve Martin and, uh, and that Little unfunny Tom lady. Lily Tomlin. Uh, Lily Tomlin, the incredible shink- shrinking woman who oh my should God. have been ground up in that disposal. Oh, that was f***ing HBO yeah. for like a year. Yeah, that was on all uh, Constantly. I mean, they played nothing yes. else but that movie. That's true. Yeah. The River Rat, The Bear, Impulse, Irreconcilable Differences with a Precocious... Drew Barrymore. Saw that in the theater, my friend. Yes. Yeah, Drew Barrymore. Is that pre coke yeah, what I, that's the one film yeah, that she didn't do coke. Yeah, in. I don't know if she's uh, off the coke by then. If she <laughs> no. was like seven. She starts was... in E.T., I think. Oh, then she's she's rocking it. Body Rock, The Wildlife, Heartbreakers, and Country. All right, so Amadeus. When Amadeus which... sweeps all the major Oscars, including Best Picture. That yeah. The Soldier Story had some, I think, nominations. And, and all of me, of Places course, in the nominated. Heart had some nominations. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. understand Amadeus. I watched it. I feel it's overrated. Mm. We're going to have to do that one. Yeah. Here's, here's I guess, the lesson, is although September is dump month, it might also also be Oscar gold. Back then, yeah, it was probably Oscar month for it. They would start releasing them. Or but very not, early on yeah, in the Oscar But none of them re- really made a lot of money during oh, that. Oh, none month, of them did. So. The, the largest, the, the, the highest grossing film is uh, Chariots of Fire. As far as high, highest ranked of the year. Not highest grossing, but it's it's as high as number seven, yeah. six or seven. That and year. even that, most of that probably came after it got nominated right. and after it won. It didn't make that much money ahead of time. It, and probably all these, I would I would imagine, get that Oscar bump. Yeah. Well, there you go. All or, right. or really cool ninja movies. Ninjas or crap or Oscar. Yeah, it Oscar. makes you happy. So maybe then. if they could, some Hollywood could come up with a movie that would combine ninja oh. movies with Oscar mojo. That would be awesome. Yeah. Kind of like uh, I can't uh, think of Crouching Tiger, hmm. Hidden Dragon type of thing. <laughs> Wonder when that was released. No, we'll no, no. That. We'll have an illegitimate Asian kid who turns out to be a ninja. To be a ninja. 
Well, as, as Greg said, if September ta- taught us nothing, it's that only a ninja can stop a ninja. That's right. Well, that's it for today's classic episode of Lunchtime Movie Review. Please let us know what you think of the film in the comments section on our website and rate it from one to five stars on that page as well. If there is an 80s film you'd like us to review, please send us an email at comments at moviehousememories.com with your name, your pick, and your location. And finally, if you are of the social media persuasion, you can look the MHM Podcast Network up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And if you do, please give us a follow when you find us. On behalf of the whole gang here at Lunchtime Movie Review, thanks for tuning in. And until next time, we have to get out of here and you guys are invited. This podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. The theme song for Lunchtime Movie Review... Fireworks is brought to you by Alexander Nakarada at SerpentineSoundStudios.com under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 license. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of Lunchtime Movie Review, the MHM Podcast Network, and Fuzzy Bunny Slippers Entertainment, LLC, unless otherwise noted.